Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick chat on the X-Duo TA66. So first, I do want to thank Apost Audio for letting me borrow their TA66 for a little bit of time. I'm always grateful to have the opportunity to hear these tube amps because I don't have my own personal tube amp. So any opportunity that I have to get a little bit more familiar with what tube amps sound like and what different configurations of tubes sound like, I'm always grateful for that opportunity. So I do want to really thank Apost for that. So this is the TA66. I am not going to pick it up and spin it around. It is actually quite heavy. It is built like a tank. It is super solid, metal, you know, everything that you would want in a very sturdy piece of audio equipment. They actually did this really, really well on TA-66. But even though this view um, isn't all that great, this is pretty much everything you need to know about TA-66. It's this dual tube configuration. So this one, this is the 6N5P. They would call this the buffer tube. It's the bigger one. It's kind of hard to tell from here, but it's actually a very large tube. That's the buffer. 6N2 is the smaller one. This is, they call it the preamp. And down here, we do have a discrete volume. So this isn't a con continuous volume dial. It actually clicks, and I think you could probably hear that. So they did that so they can control the low end volume channel matching. So all the way down at the low volume, you get nice channel matching and it kind of continues all the way through. But if you're used to a continuous volume, it is not like that. It is very much a clicky volume. And off the front, you do get a uh, six and a quarter inch uh, headphone, app, uh, headphone output. So as I said, so what is actually special about the TA66 is actually this dual tube configuration. And I actually absolutely love kind of the marketing and the idea behind the dual tube configuration. So you've got the big buffer, right? The 6N5P. That's going to give you the tube sound, that flowing organic, more analog foundation to your sound. And I think it actually does that quite well. And then they put a 6N2 in front and they call it the preamp. And I would say that it's the detail, it's the clarity, it's the edge. I would call it the sharpener. And it tries to overcome the overly soft tube presentation that you might get from this tube alone. And last time when I when I listened to the, the X-Duo TA-22, you sort of heard that one set of tubes was very soft and not quite as much clarity as I thought it was going to be. Switched to the A-Post tubes and they had a, a lot more clarity to it, a lot more edge to it, really nicely resolving. So I think this is X-Duo's attempt at, at doing this through two different tubes as opposed to tube rolling two of the same tubes. So I do, I actually love the idea and I love the marketing and how they talk about these tubes as being the buffer and the tube sound, and then this one adding the clarity and the detail and the resolution that you may have lost by only using a very tubey sounding tube uh, in the back. So yeah, absolutely love the idea of it. And I think the reality of it, the way I listen to these or the way I heard them is almost the same way that you would hear a hybrid IBM with a dynamic driver, you know, the dynamic driver, the warm guy in the back, and then a balanced armature in the front on top of it. And how you merge these two tubes and get them to sound cohesive as a pair is actually probably a little bit more difficult. So again, I love the idea. I, love, I think the words are right. The words are right with, with hybrid IMs as well. Dynamic driver for the nice, warm, tactical base, ta ta tactile base. And then a hybrid for giving you the resolution and the clarity. And, and I think the kind of the metaphor kind of works in here as well. You have this back warmer side, tubey side, and then this, this sharpener in the front. But I think finding the perfect pairing, you know, the one that sounds natural and warm in the back and still has the clarity and well-defined edges in the front, I think it's actually quite difficult, just the way it is with hybrid IBMs as well. IEMs as well. So I think this the 6N5P in the back, the foundation is right on, right? It's that, it's that warm tube, tube sound. The 6N2 in the front, it does prevent as, like I said, I think it is the sharpener, but perhaps a bit too sharp. I think slightly more edge than I was expecting, and it loses a bit of the tube sound. Again, no different than the way a hybrid, IBM, hybrid IEM works. You've got dynamic driver, and depending on how you tune the balanced armature, it either takes on a more dominant side, and you get this analytical sharper edge to the sound, or you kind of bring the, the balanced armature closer to the dynamic driver and it loses some of its clarity in the edge, but you get a very cohesive pairing between the two. And I would say that these two are a little bit farther apart than I thought they were going to be. Like in my head, I understand the marketing and I understand exactly what they were going for in the sound, but this one was probably just a little bit too edgy for me, especially on 
IEMs that were a little bit brighter, it became very edgy and you really lost a lot of what the back tube sound was going to be. And that foundation of that warm flowing tube sound kind of gets lost in a little bit of the edge. So again, I think the idea was actually right on. I think I think if on IEMs that were definitely warmer, I think this was the exact sound that was very, very appealing to me because you do get a very warm sound and on top of a warm IEM, I think all that was very, very done really, really well. This gave you the clarity that you really needed for IEMs to have that kind of presentation where it sounded like it was still resolving. But then uh, on the other side, if you had it in IEM that was already very resolving, this was probably a little bit too much. So yeah, again, uh, no different than what an IEM. I think getting this pairing and getting this, do, you know, doing a tube roll on this particular one, so it's somewhere, somewhere in between, you know, not as as sharp as this one, but maybe just kind of a half step back, so it's closer to the buffer. I think that would probably be perfect for me. And again, I would I would just say I would, if this was my personal unit, I would pull this guy out and then tube roll with it, with various versions and see how close I can get these two to my ideal preferred sound, the one that's in my head, the one I thought I was going to get. You know, the reality of getting this this pairing is i think a little more difficult than i thought it was going to be when when you read the marketing you're like oh it's perfect right it's this warm tomb sound and then we sharpen it up with this one and but getting the sharp right and, and really appealing to a general appealing sound on a lot of ims or headphones i think a little bit more difficult than i thought so again like i said i think i love the sound of it and i would just tube roll the front one to soften the edge and blend better with the with the 6n5p so yeah, that's a quick one. And again, I think these things are, are really, really cool. But just like the TA-22, I think it's trickier. The reality of listening to a tube amp after you've been listening to discrete amps for so long, very, very difficult to find the one that that sort of, you know, this is the one I want. This is the sound that I was expecting to hear. I think X-Duo has really great foundation, right? I think I think the board below this is all perfectly they have a ton of experience doing that but getting the actual tubes right that actually color the sound in a way that i was expecting this to sound probably a little bit more difficult and um yeah i'm not sure i find i found the ta66 just as difficult as a ta22 it's like it's really nice but not necessarily something that i would own but i can appreciate what they did but as far as Owning this as my personal device, I would definitely pull this guy out and, and roll it with a different style tube. So that is what I got on the TA-66. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.